Our module today is going to be principle of working as a door supervisor in the private security industry. Now, on this module, we are going to be looking at the crimes relevant to door supervisor, uh, door supervision. We are going to be talking about conducting effective search procedures, drug misuse legislation issues and procedures. We are going to be talking about preservation of evidence relevant to the role of a door supervisor. We also move on to the licensing laws. What are the laws that we need to comply with? and the premises that we work with, what are the laws they need to comply with. Then we move on to queue <coughs> management. How do you manage queue and venue capacity? What is our responsibilities? And what are we expected to do as door supervisor to ensure that the licensing objectives are met and they are also working within the law? Then we move on to talking about the various equipments that you'll be using in carrying out your duties as door supervisors. Crime relevant to door supervision. As door supervisor, our role as door supervisor is to provide a security service in or at any premises, building or event that is licensed to sell alcohol to the public. So what is the aim of a door supervisor then? Door supervisors are there, you are engaged, you are hired, you are employed to ensure that Customers and other members of staff are safe at the venue. You are also there to ensure that customers are able to enjoy themselves and to assist the venue management to comply with the licensing objectives. Also, you are there to enforce the venue admission policy and provide good customer service while doing so. As a door supervisor, you will be dealing with two types of law. One of them is the civil law, and the second one is criminal law. You will also need to know what powers you have as door supervisor to deal with different situations when laws are broken. Types of crime. There are many serious offenses that you may have to deal with during the course of your duties as a door supervisor, ranging from assault to murder. These are mostly criminal offenses for which people <coughs> can be arrested and prosecuted. You will need to be aware of these most serious and most common of these offenses. Now, can anyone tell me what is meant by civil law or what does civil law do? Disputes between, uh, Come again? Uh, disputes between people, uh, company, okay. uh, citizens. Disputes, it handles, it addresses the disputes between individuals, <coughs> companies, yes, organizations, right? And family, right? What about civil law? Okay, it deals with crimes, right? Yes, it deals with lives and property. And this is usually dealt with by the state. When I say the state, I mean the government. All right? Now, as earlier mentioned, some of the uh, offenses, serious offenses you will be dealing with are offenses such as murder. Murder is committed when a sane person over 10 years of age, through some deliberate act or omission, causes the death 
which takes place within a year and a day of the attack of a human being in that intending to kill that person or some other person or to cause grievous bodily harm. What does it mean? Murder is committed by a sane person over the age of 10 years. So, the common interpretation of this is if you cause an injury to anyone and you are over the age of 10 years and you are saved, <coughs> that means you don't have any mental, you know, uh, mental illness. You are judged to be saved. You can take right. You have not been sanctioned. And you're over the age of 10 years. If you cause any injury to someone, either intentionally or by an act of omission, and this injury, you know, leads or causes the death of that person within the one year and a day from the time it happened, you have committed <coughs> murder. So we need to be very careful. So if you injure someone today, if it is not over one year, then you are not free yet. So you got to be very careful. If that person dies as a result of that injury, you have committed murder within a year and a day. Assault, GBH with intent, whosoever shall unlawfully and maliciously by any means whatsoever wound or cause grievous bodily harm to any person with intent to do grievous bodily harm to any person or with intent to resist or prevent the lawful apprehension or detainer of any person shall be guilty of an offense. Assault. GBH, whosoever shall unlawfully and maliciously wound or inflict grievous bodily harm upon any person, and either with a weapon or instrument, shall be guilty of an offense. The most important here, guys, is for you to know what kind of offense you are likely to be, you know, coming across. This is not a law class. You don't really need to know what the definitions are. But it is good for you to know that this kind of serious offenses, you can always come across them. And you should be able to know how to deal with the situation. <laughs> assault. It is an offense to assault any person, thereby occasioning him actual bodily harm. Common assault, an offense of common assault is committed where a person either assaults another person or commits battery. We all know what is battery, don't you? What is battery? What is battery, guys? What is battery? Um, you all did this on your first day model. Yes? When you inflict personal force on someone else without consent, is battery. Rape. You all know what is meant by rape, don't you? A person A commits an offense if he intentionally <laughs> penetrates. The vagina, anus, or mouth of another person with his penis. B does not consent to the penetration, and A does not reasonably believe that B consents. <laughs> Sexual assault. A person commits an offense if he intentionally touches another person. 
The touching is sexual. B does not consent to the touching, and A does not reasonably believe that B consents. Damage with intent to endanger life. It is an offense for any person without lawful excuse to destroy or damage any property, whether belonging to himself or another, intending to destroy or damage any property or being reckless as to whether any property will be destroyed or damaged, and intending the destruction or damage to endanger life of another, or being reckless as to whether the life of another will thereby endanger. Criminal damage, a person who without lawful excuse destroys or damages any property belonging to another, intending to destroy or damage any such property, or being reckless as to whether any such property will be destroyed or damaged, shall be guilty of an offense known as criminal damage. Threat to damage. A person without lawful excuse makes to another a threat intending that the other will fear if it will be carried out to destroy or to damage any property belong to that other person or a third person or to destroy or damage his own property in a way which knows is likely to endanger the life of that other of a third person. This person is guilty of an offense known as threat to damage. Robbery. A person is guilty of robbery if he steals and immediately before or at any time of so to, or doing so, and in order to do so, he uses force on any other person or puts or seek to put any person in fear of being then and there subjected to force. Burglary. You all know what is burglary. Yeah? You all know what is burglary? Anyone does not understand burglary here? Okay. The offense of burglary is committed by a person who enters a building or part of a building as a trespasser with intent to steal anything therein or inflict grievous bodily harm on any person therein or do unlawful damage to the building or anything therein or haven't entered any building as a trespasser steals or attempt to steal anything or inflicts or attempt to inflict grievous bodily harm on any other person therein. Theft. A person is guilty of theft if he dishonestly appropriates property belonging to another with the intention of permanently depriving the other of it and thief and steal shall be construed accordingly. Fraud. A person is guilty of fraud if he is in breach of any of the sections listed in subsection 2, which provide for different ways of committing the offense. These sections are section 2, fraud by false representation, section 3, fraud by failing to disclose information, section 4, fraud by abuse of position. Possession of an offensive weapon. It is an offense for any person without lawful authority or reasonable excuse, proof whereof shall lie on him to have with him in any public space an offensive weapon. Possession of a bladed or sharply pointed articles. It is an offense for a person to have with him any article which has a blade or is sharply pointed 
in a public place without good reason or lawful authority, the honors of proof being on the carrier. This includes a folding pocket knife if the cutting edge of his blade exceeds three inches. <coughs> Now we are going to be talking about examples of uh, weapons. The first one is made. And the second one is adapted. And the third one is intended. All these to cause an injury. <clears throat> A made weapon is a weapon specifically made <coughs> to cause injury. Example of this is a knuckle duster, buttons, flick knives, and swords. These are intentionally made, specifically made to cause injury. Adapted weapons are weapons that are not originally made to cause injury, but it can be adapted, yes, to cause injury. A very good example of this is your bank card. If you take your bank card and file it, yes, the edge of it becomes very, very sharp, and you can use that to injure someone. So, by the time you now adapt it in that way, it becomes a weapon. Example of this is a razor card, homemade knives, broken bottles, chains, and sharpened links. The last one in this category is everyday item not adapted, but intended to be used to cause injury. Example of this is a hammer. The hammer used by carpenters, used by electricians, all these uh, tradesmen. The initial purpose is to use it for their job. They are not made specifically to cause injury. Yes, but it can be used to cause injury. And that's why we call them intended. Yes, hammers, baseball bats, kitchen knives, screwdrivers and bottles, right? So, if you possess any of these weapons, yes, and use it to cause injury, then it becomes an unlawful act. Any question, please? <coughs> 